All right, Mr. Gibson here with the next lesson in cryptography. Today we're going to be looking at a method of scoring potential uh, candidates for decryption to see which one of those is most likely to be our plain text. That method we're going to use is a statistical measure uh, called a chi-squared score that you might be familiar with if you've taken a course in statistics. Let's figure out what it is, how to calculate it, and see how we can use this score to help us really do a better job of decrypting ciphertext. For today, we're going to be looking at this ciphertext message. It has 994 characters in it, and we don't know how it was created. It could have been a Caesar cipher, it could have been a multiplicative cipher, or it could have been an affine cipher, any one of our substitution ciphers that we've covered so far. We're going to try and figure out which method was used, and then how it was generated, so meaning which keys were used to generate the text. Let's get started by just plotting or using a bar chart of the characters we have. So what we've done here is we've counted the number of A's, B's, C's, and so on, and we've plotted them on a bar chart. So we've, you took all 994 characters, and we have a distribution now of those characters. And thinking back on an earlier lesson in this unit, we can see that the order of our standard distribution of English characters has not been preserved. I don't see the A and E close together, even if they've been shifted. I don't see two things, two bars in a row that could have been an H or an I, or an N and an O, and I don't see a triple spike of R, S, T. So we know this isn't Caesar, which leads us to believe it's either multiplicative or affine. So we're going to have to figure out which one of those it is, and then try and figure out, well, which were the keys used. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out, well, since we don't know what the distribution of the plain text should look like, we're going to estimate it. So we're going to take the fact that we know that there's 994 characters in the message, and we know the standard frequency of each letter. So if we think about the letter A, if there's 994 characters in the message, we know that 8.167 of those, uh, percent of those, should be A's. So we can run the numbers on that and 8.167% of 994 characters gives us 81.17998. So we would expect there to be roughly 81 A's in a message of this length. Even though there's no B's in the ciphertext, what we would expect there to be in the message are roughly 14, because again, we know roughly that 1.492% of uh, the English language is the letter B. So that's where we can get our roughly 14 Bs that we would expect to be in this message when it was in the plain text. And we can go on down the line. We'd expect it to be about 27 Cs in the plain text, about 20 Ys in the plain text, and just under one Z in the plain text. So we, we've kind of created here what we would assume to be, based off of probabilities, the distribution of characters in our plain text. And now we're going to try and create a bunch of candidates that we think might be plain text. So the way we're going to create candidates is by deciphering the ciphertext using an algorithm with some keys. And I just randomly decided to do affine with a multiplicative key of 15 and an additive key of 7, counted up all the characters, and I created the bar chart on the left. And when we look at that compared to the bar chart of what we expected in the plain text on the right, we can quickly see that that was probably not the right key. The, the, these two bar charts do not look anything alike. But we could generate this. Here's another random key pairing. Doesn't look right. Here's another key pairing. Doesn't look right. And you can see that we're really no better off than brute force. We're just trying all of these, and we're, again, looking at two distributions as opposed to, earlier, just looking for English in the candidate plain text. This is no better than what we've been doing before. What we hope we could do is find a way to quantitatively, meaning based off of calculations and numbers, find a way to compare the candidate text that we generate by trying to decipher with some key pairings to the expected text based off of probabilities. So we're going to find a way to score this, and here's how we're going to do that. We're going to start by taking this candidate, so we're going to stick with this candidate I created by deciphering the ciphertext with a multiplicative key of 7 and an additive key of 12, now I'm going to count up how many letters are in the candidate text. So in this case, and this, this matches with the bar chart, there's 11 A's, 58 B's, 18 C's, and so on. And we, all the way down to the end, we get 60 Y's and 1 Z. And we can look at that and compare it to what we expected to be there. And again, the expected is based off of probabilities of what we would expect there to be in the plain text for a message of this length. And we can see that they're, they're pretty different. And we can actually quantify that difference, and we call that error. 
So if we, if we subtract off the expected from what we counted, or the actual count in the candidate, we can produce a value that measures the error in each category. And what I mean by category is letter. So for letter A, we had an error of negative 70. For letter B, we had an error of 44, and so on down the line. And you might think, well, let's just add up all the errors and figure out what's the total error that we had for our candidate. The problem with that is that no matter what, and this is just the, the way that we are doing this, um, if we add up all the errors, and some are positive and some are negative, they will always sum to be exactly zero. So, so that's not going to be helpful to us to figure out which candidate text is better than the other if the sum of all their errors is always going to be zero no matter what. So we have to do a little something with that. So in mathematics, we have a few operations that we like to use to make things all positive because that's the reason why these are summing to zero, is you got some positive and some negative. Let's just find a way to make them all positive. And a popular way that statisticians like to do that is to square the error. So I'm going to move the bar chart out of the way here to give us some more room. So we're going to go down this squared error column, and the way we generate those values is by just taking the error in the column to the left and just squaring it. So we can see that for A, we have a squared error of 4925.23, for letter B, we have a squared error of 1950, for C, 83, and so on. Let's think about what we expected. So if we look at letter A, and we were expecting there to be 81, and we were off by 70, is that better or worse than expecting there to be 14, and we're off by 44? I would actually argue that being off by 70 when you're expecting 80, is actually, it should be better than being off by 44 when you only thought there was going to be 14. The, like the size of the miss compared to what you were projecting uh, is actually closer for A, being off by 70. And the way that we can quantify that is by taking your squared error and dividing by the expected. So that number 60.67 in the first row we got by taking 4,925 and dividing it by the 81. So the squared error divided by the expected. And this gives us a way to, to kind of directly compare how badly we, we missed, and by missed we mean um, not create the correct number of letters in our, in our candidate, uh, between all the different letters. So we can see that we did better on C. We we're, were closer to getting the correct number of C's in our candidate uh, than we were for Y's because the, the squared normalized squared error of 3.07 is much smaller than the normalized squared error of 83. And if we were to total all of the normalized squared errors, this is the statistic that we were trying to create. This score of 18,926.41 is a chi-squared score for this candidate. So again, the candidate was generated using the affine decipher with a multiplicative key of 7 and an additive key of 12. And you want to think about what, what, what would be a good value for this score? And you think, okay, well, what makes a good candidate? A good candidate would have very small errors, meaning the letters, the number of letters we see in the candidate is close to what statistically we would expect there to be there. So small errors would be small squared errors, and small squared errors would lead to small normalized squared errors for each letter. So if we total up all 26 normalized squared errors, we'd want that they'd be really small. A really small chi-squared score should indicate something that's very close to what we would expect in a plain old plain text. So we could do this for all 312 possible key pairings with the affine cipher. This is reminiscent of brute force. We're going to try all of the keys. The only difference here is we're not going to be wading through candidate text and trying to find some English in it. We're not going to be comparing a bar chart of the candidate compared to the standard distribution of English. What we're going to be looking at is just the chi-squared score, which is much more numerical, which means that we can sort it. So here's what we did. I, took, I got our top five candidates here based off of their chi-squared score. We did it for all 312. I'm just showing the best five, and by best I mean the smallest chi-squared score. So we can see that the top line candidate there with an additive key of 4 and a multiplicative key of 7, when, when we deciphered using those keys, the resulting candidate text had a score of 66.868. So that's the sum of the normalized squared errors for each of the 26 letters. It was only 66. And when, in fact, when you now decipher the, that candidate using those two keys, we get English. And you can see that that, that score was far below the next closest of 1312. 
So there's our there's are going to be a really nice method here is this chi squared score. We can if we can run through all of the possible keys for a particular algorithm, use all of those keys to decipher the message, creating candidate messages. We we know hopefully one of those is the actual plain text, but we're going to get a lot of other things that are just gibberish. This method, the chi squared scoring, gives us a nice quantitative way to measure how closely our candidates align to what we would expect there to be in the plain text. And if we just trust the probability and the statistics, when we, when we choose the keys that generated the lowest chi-squared score, more often than not, those keys will result in the correct plain text. That is it for today on chi-squared scoring. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.